Talk about the best tricks or treats you can have. Welcome to the Scare Guy Show, everybody. The official production of thescareguy.com. We as filmmakers and movie fans discuss horror films, haunt events, spooky news, and anything that is scary fun and wild on the show we have for you today. My name is Jim Fry, your horror host for today's show. I'm a writer and the editor-in-chief of Scare Guy, and also our brother site, The Con Guy. And we have a couple of co-horror hosts with us today, starting first with Cheeseman. Hey, it's Cheeseman here with the ScareGuy.com. I'm a screenwriter and uh, director of social media for the Scare Guy. All right. And our Midwest correspondent, Jake. Hey, everybody. Jake from the Jacobus System. Um, normally on the con guy as the collectible guy talking about the cool exclusives and stuff for conventions, but I'm also a huge horror fan. And it's an honor to be talking to one of the stars of possibly the greatest horror movie of all time. So The greatest horror movie <laughs> ever made. She is an icon of 70s fanboys and fangirls. A legend of horror brother. And the real brother still in the real continuity to Michael Myers, and she's got a PhD. Dr. Sandy Johnson, a.k.a. the original 1978 Judith Myers from John Carpenter's original classic Halloween is our guest on tonight's show, and we could not be more excited or humbled to be in her presence. Sandy, welcome to the show. <laughs> We're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> I appreciate the invite. And Sandy is coming to us from Texas. She's, um, so we have to ask, I think most people don't realize you, you're Dr. Sandy Johnson. Can you talk to us? What are you a doctor of? I am a doctor uh, in education. It is online instructional design. So I create, or I did create courses for the internet, specifically for virtual, the virtual classroom. That's fantastic. I bet you you've been uh, a little bit busy this past year. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't do it anymore. I did it for online university several years ago, and uh, I've moved on. I, 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 I was a teacher in the real world for a long time, and when I went virtual, I just I missed the students. So, yeah, it wasn't the same. I thought it would be great, but it wasn't the same without having the students there. Well, the thing that's crazy is like you, you've had this, this very full life of so many different things. And it's, it, I just have to ask you, does it ever get tiresome talking to people like us who are just so much in awe of, of what you've become in the, in poor history? No, 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 no. I love the fans. I do. Last year, I was miserable all year because all of the cons I was supposed to go to, of course, they never happened. And it was like, no, every time they would cancel <laughs> another one. Because I really do. I love talking to the fans. So um, thank goodness for Facebook or I, I probably would have gone nuts. So no, <laughs> well, I don't get tired of it. Well, we are three of your biggest fans and admirers and filmmakers as well. So I know that Cheeseman and Jake, you guys have some questions. So Cheeseman, take it away. Yeah. So kind of we just want to get into kind of the roots of kind of your, you know, early life. Uh, were you a fan of horror growing up, of horror films? I was definitely a horror fan. My father, although he was very conservative from Oklahoma, he also liked horror movies. So even as a little kid, he took me to the drive-in to see The Blob, and he took me to see um, Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, which I'm sure scarred me for life. But <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, he started me out there, and then I went on. It's what I did with my girlfriends when we had sleepovers. So, I, yes, I've always been a fan of horror. Nice. Now, did you have any favorite actors or actresses? Um, of the old ones, of course, I loved all the classics. Um, so yeah, just Boris Karloff and all, all those guys. But I'm, I've always been more about just, um, the whole movie. I just, I'm just entertained by the whole movies. I don't zone in quite that much. Uh, of course, they're fabulous actors and, and all of that, but I really just like, just the whole thing, just, you know, like The Shining. Oh, so um, great. Yeah, there you go. Is awesome, but I just love the whole movie. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of what I do. I just, 
it's either good or it isn't for me. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have it all together. How did how did you end up in part of one of those? <laughs> how did you how did you end up oh, how did you end up in LA from Texas? Like when did you move to LA? Um, my parents moved when I was in middle school, and so they were actually they'd actually been divorced for a long time. But my dad moved first, and then my mother moved. So I lived between the San Fernando Valley and Manhattan Beach, back and forth between parents. Oh, wow. And, um, so that I was there until I was in early 20s, I guess, 25, somewhere in there. And then I, I moved back to Texas. Well, we got to ask, what about acting? When did the acting bug bite you? How did you get into that? I got into acting in middle school. I was in drama. I was in play production. I loved to dance. So I was in dance production, dance choreography. So it all, it all really started with middle school through high school and into college. Nice. Now, how'd you get into kind of like the Hollywood business beyond school? Like what were some of your first kind of like acting roles you got? Mm, well, I started when I got out of school, I started going to like Burbank studios and the different studios because they have acting classes and improv classes. So I kind of went that route. And then I got an agent and I started doing commercials and commercials like McDonald's and uh, Roy Rogers commercials and, and um, I did a lot of print ads, international print ads and furniture ads and different things. And then I, when I did um, Playboy, then I started, then I had two agents. And so then I started getting more calls. And so that kind of led to the movies. You were, um, you were Playmate of the Year, weren't you? No, Playmate of the Month. Of the Month, uh, okay. June, yeah, June, I was Miss June 1974. And so that led to you getting quite a bit of attention and the agents started calling. Cool. <laughs> I, I mean, it was, it was the area of B, of B movies. So um, that's what they wanted people that were comfortable that way. So I was fine with it. And uh, yeah, it was fun. But I do have to ask, you say your dad was fairly conservative, like, cause it, like the movies of the seventies, I mean, it were such great kind of like, they, they seemed more salacious than what they were. It's, it's like, you know, gas pump girls and, and stuff like that. They're just fun movies. How, how did your dad take to that? Um, it probably would have killed my dad, but uh, actually the reason why I did Playboy is because he was very sick. He oh. had cancer and um, he wanted a treatment that was only available in Mexico. And I was trying to figure out how to get the money to help him do that. And so, someone mentioned playboy and so that's that's actually why i did playboy because it it paid a lot at, you know for the time um, so yeah he didn't he didn't live long enough to know i even did playboy or that i was in this. and i didn't tell him because he was so sick and i knew he wouldn't be happy <laughs> that i did that yeah well, i'm sorry to hear that i, I um but like uh, the, the big question when did you make the jump to this this role, Halloween, Judith Myers? How did you get that? That's like the role of a lifetime. Yes. Well, um, I just got a call. My agent agency called me and said, you have a what they call go sees. I don't know what they call them now, but back then that you went out and go see. You would go see if they liked you, basically. And <laughs> um, so it he said it's for a film called the babysitter murders and oh yeah yeah. Was, yeah so i just it was the the interview was actually in a neighborhood it was not at the studios or anything it was actually in pasadena and because they had all you know they were already starting some of the preliminary shooting and everything so when i went i read uh, parts for the different women in it and they made me scream, which was weird because it was a neighborhood. <laughs> what are the neighbors thinking that I'm getting murdered in here? Yeah. But anyway, they called my agent maybe the day after or soon after 
and said that I had been cast as Judith Myers. So, of course, wow. I was very excited. <laughs> so, uh, what was it like working with John Carpenter? Oh, and Deborah Hill. And Deborah Hill. Yeah. He, was, he was a great director. Uh, Deborah Hill was wonderful. The two of working with the two of them together, demonstrating what they wanted and um, the feel of each shot, how they wanted me to fall, and just all the different things. Yeah, it was definitely a, an honor to have worked with both of them. Now, what kind of direction specifically with kind of like the opening of the film did they give you? You know, like you start kind of in the room, They there maybe was a few small cuts and things. And then even like, I didn't know if like maybe you improvise any of the lines or the humming or the singing to yourself. Like what was kind of the process or direction they gave you for that big, long shot? Right. For the living room shot, he said he just wanted it fun and, and lighthearted, just having a good time not worried about anything. So that's, you know, that's kind of what I went with that. Just having a good time, just being fun and teenagerish. And then as we moved upstairs, he um, still, he wanted to keep it fun and lighthearted. So kind of joking up the stairs, running up the stairs, just playful. And then once we got in the, once the boyfriend leaves and I'm in the room, that he, he didn't really say hum, he just said, you know, brush your hair and do what you would do. Well, I I like to sing, so I I just naturally hum and, and sing when I do things. So, and people ask me what was I humming, and I, I don't have a clue. I try to remember <laughs> and listen to it, and I don't know. But yeah, so he just, the, the direction upstairs was mostly how he wanted me to turn. He wanted me to say, Michael, he wanted how he wanted me to fall and and when to hit my chest with the blood pellets and those kind of directions fantastic so let's wow. can we let's talk about that opening scene it's probably from what i understand it's one of the very first uses of the city cam and it um that opening scene to this day is it's just used as an example of one of the most perfect opening scenes in either a horror film or any film it's just so iconic um, how long did it take to film that? And because it does appear as if it's just one shot, the camera's going, but you guys probably had to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse to get that right. And I know this was kind of a shoestring budget of a film. So if you can talk about that process. Right. So we did practice many times because there were a lot of things to consider, not just for the actors, but for the, for the crew to make sure that they weren't the rooms were small, so trying to move that camera through the house and not really have it reflected in things or things that shouldn't be seen, you know, to, to make sure that everything like that was clear and nothing was showing that shouldn't have been showing. So, yeah, it was interesting getting the time right through the window around the house, through the kitchen to get us upstairs and back down. and. Yeah, it was it was an interesting shot, and we probably rehearsed it, gosh, all the way through, probably at least six or seven times to yeah. get everybody in sync and doing the right thing. And and then we only did two actual takes, though. Wow! Oh wow! Yeah, it's one of the most uh, impressive edit editing sequences because it does appear like it's all just one shot but the the cuts are so subtle you don't even like really notice you know right like luke you had a question about the hands and stuff whatnot yeah like i've seen some special features but uh you were there personally and i know like it wasn't actually the kids hands and then how did they do the process of like the mask and the hands and that whole kind of thing like from your perspective the the hands of course were deborah and there wasn't a mask the mask was added um through special effects so she was just coming at me she was low down like on her knees or something i just remember she was low down and she had very small hands so she was doing the stabbing at me and then and then they added the mask later which is it's so good. I mean, that's one of the greatest things about it is how it came out looking for the mask. It's very yeah. creepy. That's now, so what was the knife made from? 
uh, I think the knife was real. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I don't remember it being a fake knife because she didn't get that close to me. Yeah. Uh, they were, be because they were trying to not have a child in it doing such an act, <laughs> she was fairly far away from me. And um, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a real knife. If it wasn't, it looked very real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was kind of glad, distance. So well, I was mean, like a little uh, Hitchcock on you there, because that was kind of like Alfred Hitchcock to get the one take he wanted from, you know, Jamie Lee Curtis's mom, like uh, Janet Lee, actually did kind of a knife that kind of like, watched a movie scared. about that, and it's kind of crazy to do that. Did you feel yeah. kind of any like correlations in the filmmaking to Psycho? Um, sort of a little bit whenever the mother spins around and it's got that nah, 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 nah. <laughs> that was kind of like the stabbing at me through the mask that's kind of weird like that it's a it's a unique shot because because of the mask it's you know the vision is obstructed so there's that shot where you're getting killed and then it cuts to the camera looking at the hand just so like we can see what's happening and i always yeah. thought that was such a uh, creative decision to do because it's almost like michael like he's witnessing himself doing this and like he's so out of his mind he doesn't know he's just like what is happening like he's watching his own hand do it so i get why they shot it like that so you can see like what's going on because it's so obstructed but yeah it's such a it's such a you know cool shot you know <laughs> now was that a cut like did the camera actually tilt up and tilt back to catch your character laying on the ground and bleeding or do, was that a cut were they do you remember uh, there were no cuts there were they probably they probably yeah, did was, also they, they probably did also because it moves away and then when it cuts moves back you have blood on you were they like, yeah putting blood on you Right, so they're just they're moving it different ways, but I I don't think they ever stop. Wow, that was so impressive. That's such an impressive scene. That's that's that is intense. All right, Luke. So, like some of the other actors, like did you meet? Um, uh, so David Kyle played your boyfriend. I think that's hopefully how you. It's Kyle. Uh, uh, played your boyfriend did you really get to meet him much before like doing the scene <laughs> no <laughs> we met briefly, um but no it was just like um spin the bottle or something you know <laughs> <There he is. laughs> uh, but he was very nice it was fine it was fine and in fact i i hadn't seen him since that day until uh, H40 in Pasadena because he doesn't do cons and mm -hmm. he, that was the only con he, he ever did and he only did it because I was going to be there for the first uh, time. Nice. So, he, oh, that's great. That's really so cool. he was actually at a table right next to me and so we got to visit and everything else. So it was fun. I heard um, awesome. when PJ Souls talking about like um, you and she both had Kind of like an uncomfortable scene to, to, to be have people in the room and, and filming and whatnot. But then Deborah Hill really made it like she was kind of your advocate there. Is, is that how you remember it? Like she was the one that was there trying to make you more comfortable? Yes. Yeah, she was great. And when I was up there, you know, with the guys and everybody with all the cameras and all that stuff, she was there and just put me at ease. And yeah, it was great. She was very good. Fantastic. And speaking of PJ, she's just adorable. I love her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anytime I'm at a con, I always say, please put me by PJ. Her <laughs> I love being by both of them. They're so fun. Were you, able, were you able to meet Donald Pleasance on the set? No, unfortunately not. Uh, My scene was first in the movie, but last to be shot. Oh, wow. The house, really? yeah, the house was... When they got the house, it was a mess. So they shot all the scenes where it's a mess first. And then for my scene where it's a house that someone's actually living in, they fixed it all up. So they didn't want to do that twice. So they shot all the 
dilapidated stuff, and then they fixed it up for my shot. They were oh. still working on it that day. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's Have you been over to see the house in South Pasadena since uh, the film? Not since they moved it? I haven't. I will. Um, at age 40, oh my gosh, you know, that was my first convention after being found. So it was crazy nuts with people. I didn't have time to go anywhere. I never saw so many people in a line. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I did go to the Myers house in North Carolina last summer, which is where I shot a lot of my photos that are that I use on social media. And that was a trip because the house is built on the original blueprints so externally it's identical and then of course the inside is different because they live there but the location of um, judith's bedroom is the same so uh, my husband and i stayed there for a couple of nights for an event a signing event and also to do the photo shoot so i got to sign the window seal and the, the pantry i mean it was just fun it's like got signatures in the house. I think we have a couple of photos from the. Is this the the house? Well, that that's outside the, the house. Yep, that's taken in the front yard, and that Judith Myers tombstone was actually made uh, by Kenny. He's the owner by his mother. So oh, wow. that that was cool. And here's another great shot of you by the tombstone. Now that one's in my front yard. Oh, this is your front yard. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's did, you, did you carve the pumpkin yourself too? <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, I, I don't know. I did carve one, but I can't remember which one you just showed. If that's one I carved or if that was a plastic one. That might have been see. a plastic one. No, no. Yeah, I think I carved that one. Nice. Yes, I did. Yeah. yeah. That's really that's cool. awesome shot. Here's another awesome shot I love. This is me, the first time that you and I met. We met just recently at the Days of the Dead convention in Las Vegas. That was so cool. And then I was, um, this is me getting the picture signed. I'm going to, and uh, let me see. You can barely see it. This is the picture right here. Let me nice. see. My, yeah, geez, you got to get that thing framed. I know. Isn't that, I'm going to get it framed. I know I need to get that framed. I just think that it's so so fantastic so fantastic all right luke you got some more questions yeah so we already asked about donald did you meet like jamie lee or did you like ever meet the kid that actually played michael the will will sandin did you ever encounter your actual killer <laughs> <laughs> yes i i did meet jamie lee she was in the uh, dressing room area with me and she was kind of helping me with stuff so that was she was very gracious and um, I do believe that Will Sandon was there. Um, by the time we got finished, I was very tired. <laughs> so I don't remember a whole lot. I think I mostly was just ready to pack up and go home because I had a pretty long drive. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I believe he was there and I think I remember seeing him. But I didn't really, I don't remember hanging out with him or anything. He was at, I think, the first time that I ever um, saw you, it was the 40th anniversary convention in Pasadena. And I think Will, was Will at that as well? I he think was. he was. I, I think so, yeah. He's been at three or four cons that I've done, and he's very nice. And that was your very first convention? It was, yes. Wow. But prior to that, I hadn't ever even seen or heard of a horror convention. Wow. <laughs> I remember I it was just like, oh my God, there's so many people here. <laughs> I mean, because I remember the um, before the convention, there were notices going out. It's like, where is Sandy? We need Judith Myers. Here's the 40th. We need to. And were you deliberately avoiding? If that's a question I can ask, or you just were just you had a life and you were doing other things. <laughs> I had a life and I really didn't realize that Halloween had become an icon. I really hadn't thought about the film in years. I I had heard that they'd made some sequences, but sequels, <laughs> but I was a full-time teacher. I was earning a PhD. I, was, I had a family. I mean, I was a busy person. 
And so when the agent found me, Rick and Rick, he's my agent, he's wonderful. Um, he said, you know, you, you realize you have fans and that Halloween is like a pretty famous movie. And I said, uh, no, actually, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I mean, oh, wow. nobody could believe it that I didn't know. And, and I, I mean, I never even Googled my name. If I had, obviously, I would have learned a bunch of stuff. But <laughs> I just figured I had an interesting name to Google, so I didn't. <laughs> oh, so, my goodness. Yeah, no, it was a definite, it was a definite surprise. And in fact, my husband was asleep on the couch and he has a hard time sleeping. So I didn't want to wake him up. So I, so I did it that night. But while I was sitting there at once, I hung up with the agent. Of course, I was going through to see if he was just some crazed person who reached out me to the night with some weird story or <laughs> if he actually was an agent with a website with a hundred other clients. <laughs> and so yeah it was uh it was an interesting few weeks and then right after that was 2018 and they were just about to wrap it but they had to have my signature to put the the um kills thing in it from 78 and they, they couldn't do it without that and they hadn't been able to find me either so then i i was uh made the contact with blumhouse and that's how i managed to get into the 2018 just in time <laughs> Oh wow! Oh wow! I, we're going to ask you about the 2018 film in just just a second, but I know that Luke, you had some questions about convention life a little bit here. Yeah, just wanted to hear a little more about your like overall experience. What's the fan experience been like, and do you have any like favorite stories? Well, I like I said, whenever I went to age 14, I really didn't know what to expect. I just walked in met my agent for the first time he took me to my table he'd made this big banner behind it he had taken a bunch of my pictures and printed them all up and he said okay you're gonna sit here and you just you're gonna sign and they may want you to stand up and and take a picture with them and stuff so i said okay so then they opened the door and i'm thinking you know maybe 10 15 people and all of a sudden there's this line as far as i can see and i'm like <laughs> going oh my god there's so many people in line and it was just, i mean it was just nuts and they were so excited to see me i mean the enthusiasm was just it was so contagious i mean i had the best time they they were just wonderful i just had a wonderful time meeting them all and hearing their stories and how they first saw halloween and i they were just a zillion stories and it was just so fun so after it was all done the agent says you know not everybody enjoys doing these so you've done now one now what do you think you want to do another and i said hell yeah <laughs> 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 to as many of those you can are you kidding i had a blast these That's people awesome. are great <laughs> and just from, from the fans perspective like it's hard like we we loved this film and we're such big fans and so yeah that it's kind of cool to hear you say that you didn't even realize that um you had this fandom i mean Oh my gosh, that's. I had no idea. I had no idea. And I had no idea that everybody was going to be so nice. I mean, I just, I didn't know what to think. I'm thinking horror community people. What could these people be like? I mean, will they be nice? <laughs> I don't know. And so I really met a horror community. And they were like the nicest people on the planet. I was immediately in love with all of them. I said, these people are so nice. And they love me. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> like so, Zach, you did a, a bunch of horror conventions. I mean, what's the community's pretty pretty chill and nice, right? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, ninety nine percent of my experiences have just been wonderful. I mean, I have met the nicest people. I have great people that follow me. I have great friends on Facebook. I mean, I just I cry along with them when they lose a fur baby, and I mean, cool. yeah, it's just great. Um, it's been really fun. So yeah, the oh. cons are awesome. I can't wait for Chicago. I know this is going to be the biggest one ever. I've heard from so many fans and they have so many celebrities there that Chicago's Chicago's going to be huge. Nice. When is that? When is the Chicago convention? Uh, Chicago flashback is the last weekend of this month. It's two weeks, a little less oh, wow. than two weeks. Yeah. Fantastic. So I have Pennsylvania this weekend and then Chicago. So it's going to be crazy. 
But yeah, so technically, Chicago could be like Haddonfield since you know, it took place at Illinois. So it's like you're going Illinois. Home. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's in I guess it's Rosemont, which is mm -hmm. right just real close to the airport. It's supposed to be a really nice hotel. It's huge and it's totally sold out and has been for I don't know how long. But yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. There's going to be people from all over there. That's fantastic. Nice. And we are kind of bumping up towards the end of the show. So Luke and Jake, you guys go ahead. No, so what's the craziest thing you've had to sign from a fan so far? Or, or the the most bizarre? It doesn't have to be crazy, but you know. Um, I would say the coolest thing I had to sign was a handcrafted Myers house. I mean, it was really nice. Ooh. And it played the music. So nice. they could push a button on it somewhere. So they had this big Myers house and they wanted me to sign on the side of it. And it was very cool. I used to do miniatures, so I loved it. Wow. That's awesome. That's cool. Amazing. Nice. Jake? As you can see, I'm a big uh, collectible fan. Do you have any... Um, any Halloween collectibles or any personal favorite things or any um, memorabilia from actually filming the, the movie or anything? No, I don't. Uh, in fact, one of the films that I'm going to be doing, I said, I'm getting memorabilia from this film because I have nothing. <laughs> I did have the hat from Playboy that was auctioned off just like eight months ago. So I had that for all those years. But I didn't have anything from any of the movies. So I told the directors that I'm working with, I said, I'm getting memorabilia from these. <laughs> is, it the cowboy photos. <laughs> is it the cowboy hat from Playboy? No, from Playboy, it was it's a green baseball hat that has an oh, S on it. Oh, that's right. Um yeah. Luke, go ahead. Oh um. okay. But I, look, we're gonna ask you in just a second about the film. The new films that are coming out because Halloween is back in the public consciousness in a big way. But I do have to ask you: You said the Halloween House in North Carolina. Did you? Is this the set of the film you were visiting, or just somebody who was a very big fan? It's someone that was a huge fan who went to California, got the original blueprints, went back to North Carolina, and and had the house built. And it's amazing. The oh, wow. um, only his friends and certain people get to go inside the house, but inside the house is filled with the most incredible collection of horror memorabilia imaginable. It is fabulous and super oh, nice guy. Him and his, and his girlfriend, Lauren, were the best hosts. Just, we had a blast there. <laughs> nice. And you, I mean, you can go there. They, have vent, they have events there. They have a huge movie screen outside, like a drive-in movie screen. And you can sit out on lawn chairs and stuff, and they show horror movies and have events. Great place. You know what's cool? In South Pasadena, at the actual house where they filmed, there's a, an art gallery behind there, directly behind the house. And they show movies on the back side of the, the Michael Myers house. So that's, that's kind of nice. cool. And there's such a fandom there. They're sold out every weekend they show movies oh, there. Wow. Sugar Mint Gallery. Was big. What's that? Yeah, Sugar Mint Gallery. Huh. Uh, any other questions, guys, before we ask her about the new films? Uh, I just want to know in general from either like Halloween or some of the other films you've made, like, are you still in touch with any of the pe the crew or the actors that you've worked on? Like that you'd say like, Oh, we're like friends. We keep in touch or it sounds like now you've reconnected with a lot of people, but just kind of like over the years. Um, I wouldn't say friends, but I would say good acquaintances. I meet them at the cons and they have, drawn me in so nicely. So, I mean, they've been very gracious and nice to welcome me into the Halloween community after all these years. So, I mean, PJ and Nick and James and all of them, they're just Nancy, they're just super nice people. So I'm always excited to see them at a con and, and I love it when we're close together so we can visit some and for the photo ops, we get to visit some, so yeah, very nice. So uh, we want to ask you before we leave. Well, first of all, what do you have coming up? Because I know that you are you're working on some projects now. I am. I I recently did a cameo in a Hungarian film called Bulbs, 
The Lust for Revenge. And it's actually the second part of a series. The first one was called The Prologue. And when they sent it to me to look at, I didn't realize that they were considering for anything in it. He just wanted me to look at it. And I was really impressed. I thought it was fabulous. It has a, a story that I like. It's about someone who gets revenge on people who abuse animals. And I'm a huge animal advocate, so I, I can certainly relate to that. <laughs> well. I'm looking forward to that one. They're, they're, they're finishing up the filming on it now, so it should be out before too long. I'm also working on a film. I'll be shooting it in the UK in October, and it is for Great Northern Productions. It is a horror film, and I it's more than cameo. I have a, I have a larger role in it. Cool. Then um, there's another film that I have a nice part in that um, I'll be, I think we'll start talking about it at Chicago if all goes well in flashback. Oh, and nice. There's that one other foreign film that I think um, they're definitely considering as well. So, yeah, I'm excited. Nice. Wow, you're busy. <laughs> yeah, I've got cons nonstop from now to till the end of October, so it's crazy, but I love it. Every one of them, I love. It's it's almost like it's kind of cool. Like for for the past forty years, you you had this this other life as this you know Doctor Johnson and creating the, these different things, and then you said, okay, now I'm starting this this gigantic con and convention and fandom and movie making life. I think that's, that is such, that's so cool. I, I love that journey. But before you go, we do have to ask you if Halloween is back in the public consciousness. We have a trio of films, a trilogy. The first one, which you have seen, we would love to know your take on Halloween, the 2018 version. I loved it. It, it scared the hell out of me, but <laughs> I, I really loved, I mean, there's certain things about it I really loved. I loved it at the uh, sanatorium where they hold the mask up and mm -hmm. everybody's just all this energy is just going around between everybody. That was just, I thought that was an amazing scene. And then the the one where the reporters in the bathroom, yeah, it's like when they're with her, that one is just totally terrifying with the teeth falling on the floor and all of that. That's just scary as hell. And <laughs> then the one, um, the other one I really like is when he reaches into the trunk and pulls up the mask and boom, that one's so cool. The photography and everything is just wow. And yeah. then, the, I mean, I loved, I loved the granddaughter. I mean, I loved the whole premise of the movie. It was, I, I just, I really liked it. The house. I thought the house was extremely cool with the downstairs thing and the island that spins around and the doors that lock. I just thought that was cool. I love architecture stuff anyway. So I just, I thought the house was cool. So yeah, I loved it. I'm definitely ready for the next one. Yeah. Do you know anything about the next one? I, we just have to ask. No, I don't. I know I'm not in it. Okay, that's what we were wondering. <laughs> I wish I were. Um, no, I just know what everybody else knows from the trailer, which was, whoa, <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't even thought about the poor firemen coming to put out the fire. <laughs> we're starting the campaign now. Look at here. We think you should be in a cameo at least in one of these two films coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would love to be in the ends. I know my my agent has contacted them about both of them. So uh, obviously the first one they said no. So there's still hope for this one. I mean, they have brought a lot of people back. And mm -hmm. PJ, you know, she was used in 2018. Oh, I didn't she, know that. Yeah, she was the teacher's voice. Oh, did not know that. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> totally. There you go. So there's always a way. Oh, there's so always a way, yeah. Better. But I would love that. All but in right. the meantime, I'm having a ball working with the directors I'm working with now, and I'm just delighted, even if they're just indie films, I'm having a wonderful time. Sandy, we are, this is such a pleasure to meet you. This is so awesome of a time. Thank you so much. Luke and Jake, is there anything you want to ask Sandy before we have to say goodbye? Um, I, I know the three, like, 
Jim and Luke and I, I know we watch Halloween multiple times. We're obsessed each, with fans. <laughs> each year around Halloween, what we watch, do you watch it every year or when was the last time you've watched it, Sandy? Oh, probably about six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a great film. I mean, I can watch it over and over and over. Yeah, it's, it's just a good mm -hmm. film. That's yeah. awesome. Right. Luke, do you have anything? And I guess my final question would be, and it's kind of a no-brainer, but may, maybe not. What What's your favorite scene of Halloween? I know you're in the opening, so obviously that's probably it, but just thought I'd ask what your favorite scene of the movie is. Oh, wow. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I guess the beginning, not not just my scene, but just approaching the house. I, the, that whole long scene, I just think, is mm -hmm. just so awesome. Looking in the window, and I don't know, it's just so artsy. Yep. That um, yeah, I just I just really love that whole scene, whether or not it's me or not. The whole thing is just so beautifully artistically done that 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 would have to be it. I think. I, I agree in the entire because there's I think there's like 13 Halloween franchise films now of all I think I'm probably wrong but it, it's up there but of all the films I agree that opening scene of the original film cannot be topped the my second favorite would be Jamie Lee Curtis when she's inside the closet and he's mm -hmm. coming in with the coat hanger because that one is so simple like if you look at horror films today the simplicity. And the thing I loved about John Carpenter's originally, his original film, which you, that you guys were in, was a, it was so simple. It was the babysit. Like you're seeing a kid comes in and kills his sister. Walks up this. It's such a simple scene, but it just terrorized the country. Um, when did you? And this is my last question. When did you realize that Halloween was such a big deal? Was it all these years later, or did when did you know that it had become a big? Uh, a huge yeah, I, I didn't know till my agent told me on the phone. Um, well, he texted me. I was playing words with friends with my best friend, and I got this <laughs> weird text. And I'm just thinking, who who is this interrupting my game? <laughs> so it turned out to be um, Rick, and that's when he's and he's telling me this stuff, and I'm just thinking, well, this is just crazy. So we were texting back and forth, and that's when I learned that. Mm -hmm. uh, that I had fans and that they'd been looking for me and that Halloween was an iconic film. People around the world knew about it. And of course now I have fans from around the world, so that's true. <laughs> but yeah, I, I did I did not know. I had no idea. Well I do have one more question I just thought of that I just gotta know. That's okay. So what is your theory of why Michael did it? Why did he kill you? Was it did he, you didn't take him trick or treating. He didn't like you messing around with that boy. He just, you weren't a good sister. What would you say is the reason Michael did it? I think that he was jealous because I wasn't playing with him. I didn't have the interest in him. Maybe I did when he was younger, but now I was into boys. And instead of watching him, I was now off with another boy upstairs. And I think it was just, uh jealousy i'm just going to take care of her wow mm. and freaking tastic sandy johnson this uh, aka uh judith myers the most famous big sister in horror thank you so much for spending some time with us today uh my name is jim fry you can find me at james d fry here at the scareguy.com jake where can people find you you can find me on Instagram at the Jacoba system. Cheeseman? Uh, you can find me on social media on Twitter and Instagram at Cheese on Couch and also on thescareguy.com. And Sandy, if people want to find out where you're going to be appearing or follow in your next adventures, where can they follow you? They can follow me on Instagram at Unicorn Sandy J or on Facebook at The Real Sandy Johnson, or they can go to my website, where, which is where I post my cons, etc. And that is unicornsandyj.com. Unicornsandyj.com. We'll make sure we post that in the notes here. Everybody, 
Happy Halloween season. Where whatever time of year you're watching this, it's always a pleasure when you get to watch the, this great movie. It makes you just crave more Halloween. Sandy, thank you again. Uh, hopefully, we will see you at the cons around. I don't know around here, around everywhere, wherever you're going to be. We're, we're, I, I do have to tell you that one last thing, just to tell you how obsessive we are. Cheese, <laughs> Luke, Luke Cheeseman here. He's actually he created a a. a Halloween, the scenes of Halloween, the original Halloween, all the scenes then and now, and um, went all around town filming every scene, every place you guys filmed, and it, it was a lot of fun. So, uh, just to oh, tell you, the fandom is Michael Myers. <laughs> Michael Myers himself gave the tour of Haddonfield a few years ago, whenever I did it, and yeah, we even updated yeah. it at one point. It's cool. fantastic. So anyway, Sandy, thank you so much. Everybody, thank you for watching the Scare Guys show. We do appreciate it. Please share this around and tell your people, tell your people, tell your friends how much you love the show. Make sure you follow Sandy. Go see her at the conventions. This is a convince her how big this fandom is. She doesn't, <laughs> I just love it that she was surprised by this. This is so sweet. You are just such a Dr. Sandy Johnson. Thank you for being a part of the show today and we will see you at the next con. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Appreciate it. Bye. Thank you.